How you doing, Monica? I'm fine. I'm <laughs> on the road with my dogs and my bunnies and my teenagers and a lot of glare. Well, but I'm trying to, yeah. I was just going to say we need to be pretty transparent as well. Oh, you don't, come on. Don't right? make me complain. You know, you're, you're, you're what we call a professional. I get this <laughs> message. I get this message from Monica. I sent her some ideas, and she's like, "Listen, I'm giving you a heads up. I don't feel great." What's up, John Jasper from the UK? Hey, JJ uh, from the UK. You, uh, you're like, I don't feel great. I've got some migraines setting in, and I go, "Hey, we can reschedule." And you're like, "Absolutely not." People expect us to show up, <laughs> and I am there. So you are here. Pl you're playing injured. You're like a. You're like an yes, NFL. Yes, exactly. Player. You got to play injured. I learned that in investment banking. That was usually because I was hung over. I'm not hung over. I, I'm on the, I'm on location in like the desert in California near where Coachella <laughs> is. And um, so I relocated here. We came out here. We Airbnb this place. And every once in a while, rarely, it is, it is available. So it was my husband's birthday. So we came out and I had to go on the road with my teenagers and my bunnies and my dogs. And uh, who has pet, but you take your pet bunnies with you? I had to because, so I got, I call them my daughter's therapy bunnies. Okay. So when, when the Corona times set in, like it was tough on people and they were getting socially isolated. So I was like, what are the smallest bunnies you can find? She wanted a bunny. She wanted a cat. My husband doesn't like cats. So we got these Norwegian dwarf bunnies and what were we going to do with them? So we took them with us mm -hmm. and let me just tell you three teenagers, a mom, two bunnies and two golden retrievers in uh -huh. one vehicle or as my son with down syndrome calls it a vehicle <laughs> in what he thinks the h is an n so anyway <clears throat> it was the freak i thought the bunnies were going to die of a heart attack because there are these predators like hovering over their little cage <clears throat> on the way out for two hours but anyway so there's something yeah. wrong with like the bed here or something but i woke up with like a pinched nerve or i don't know what the hell and i have some like migraine medicine laying around but i didn't want to take it because i thought I would be even sillier than usual if I had that. Well, you know, you can maybe see those. That's those are the mountains and the desert in the background. We can't see, but I appreciate you using your words to explain it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. And Franny said, "Franny said, and oh, Ricardo. Franny's here, Ricardo. Yes, Ricardo. That's well, my husband. Said, oh." It's not Ricardo is not his name, but I call him Ricardo, which is the Ice King's heart from Adventure Time. Anyway, he I doesn't want nothing. me to use his real name. Oh, so you have to come up with fake names. So And cardio, like he's a heart <clears throat> cardio. Aww. A little Spanish. That is influence. that is so sweet. Yeah. You're are you are you a very, are you a are you a sweet person at heart? Or are you kind of cut and dry? Mm. Little. What do you think? Fran, <laughs> I think, I think no, you, I'm not. I'm really trustworthy and I'm uh, like kind. I don't want, I'm not cruel at all, but I'm like a huge pain in the ass and probably very hard to, cause I'm just like, what, what do you mean? You couldn't figure it out. Did you try to figure it out? Oh no. Could you? Oh yeah. Like I'm relentless because I'm too analytical. I'm too analytical for a mom. Moms are supposed to be a little fuzzier, but I'm like, whatever. Franny says, I love you. <laughs> and I don't nice. know if she's talking to me or you. I'm not mushy. <laughs> they not all mushy. love you, Clint, because you're nice well, to me and they love me. Well, that's good. That's good. This I've told you a hundred times. These conversations, I have about five to eight a week. These are This is my social life. I don't get to get out of the yeah. house. Hey, I got tested for COVID this week. Oh, how'd it go? Nice. I'm negative. Did you have so was, symptoms? So is my daughter. So no, but my daughter was at school and she was around a group of kids. They all got tested and two of them are pretty sick. Two of them are pretty, pretty bad sick they, right now. Right. And they have so, like a cold <clears throat> flu kind of illness. Yeah. And it came on really fast. And so we went and got my daughter tested. Yeah. 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 Those are better. 
These are better. Yeah, less they're not glary. as let, well. There's not as much glass. Well, unless you're gonna look up like I that. Can't, well, because I can't see. It. They're they're progressives. <laughs> well, if you're so gonna look I up, then it doesn't matter. No. How but about we, no glasses at all? That's, is that okay? It's. I mean, we to us, we get to see more of your face, which is a great thing. I that's can't awful. see it at all, though, so I have no idea. What I could have like spinach in my teeth, and I would not know. So we'll I'll, how you. about that? I'll just we'll I'll you. just trust you, but I'm not reading the comments this week. Uh, well, we're in trouble then. Uh, but we both got tested. She's negative. I'm negative. But several of her friends aren't. So we've just come to the conclusion because it's free here and it's so easy to go. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. I don't get to hang out with her much as much as but since COVID. So we're just going to go go get tested about once every two weeks. And when just she's negative, fun. well, she's going to get to come to my house. If she's negative oh. and I'm negative. Oh, that's great. So whether it's real or not, in everybody's so, world, at least it'll put some some peace of well, mind. Well, look, I mean, everybody. people get sick. There, there's no question about it. But here's the thing that I am curious about your observations. I'm not looking mm -hmm. for statistically sound samples or anything. But in my personal mm -hmm. experience and observation, there has been zero, if not negative, correlation between illness and a positive test. People who went, everyone I know who went because they felt ill came back with a negative. And people I know, I mean, there are a couple of people and many people have given me the same report who didn't even get the test. They didn't want to wait on the two hour line. So they left after signing up and both got a letter in the mail saying they were positive. So yeah. there's no correlation between positives and illness in my personal experience. And I'm curious the, about yours. I think the two kids that already had symptoms when they went and got tested, they came back positive. They right. came back for positive. And, like and, me and, my, and no other sick kids were, no, none of the know. sick kids were negative. That's what I want to know. Find out. I don't, I don't, I, mean, I don't know. I don't right. have a clue yet. Well, well, but now that she's got this many friends, I mean, it's a 30 something, it's a group of 30 something people from, they've set the school down for the next week. So in her group, she'll start, she will give us, and she will give us some anecdotal feedback and I can start keeping track without using names. And I can I can probably have a better feel for that next week because this just happened this you week. You know what else I'm curious about? How many people who got flu shots are ill? Because the season for what's called acute flaccid myelitis, which they say is an expected symptom of asymptomatic COVID in kids, but mm -hmm. it is an actual symptom or something similar to it to a complication of the flu vaccine. So people come down with acute flaccid myelitis from August to November. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's because that's when you get vaccines, vaccinations, they go back to school, they get their vaccination. So I am curious if people get the flu shot and then feel flu-like symptoms, which is a common side effect of flu shot. And then yeah. then they go get their tests and, and maybe there's false positives related to that. Like well, AIDS has false positives related to hepatitis. Well, you li you've lived in the South, so you know this is the time of year for allergies too. There's yes, about a there's about a, a forty five right. to sixty day period in the fall, a forty five to sixty day period in the spring, where as the seasons change, the ragweed and the pollen, especially going into spring, it's pollen. But right, the allergies here right now are terrible. So you've got everybody coughing and sneezing and oh my gosh, watery oh, and eyes. actually those symptoms to the extent that you do get illnesses from people, regular breathing and singing and stuff is, we were never taught about that as a kid, but coughing and sneezing would be, if an infectious disease were to perpetuate itself, that would be just the kind of symptom that would favor the longevity or the transmissibility of a disease. So did you I would- see the, Did you see the work. video of that lady at the football game watching her son yeah. play football? Yeah. So she was watching her son play football and it looked like she was sitting next to someone, but those two people were away from everybody else, but she mm -hmm. didn't have a mask on and she got mm -hmm. arrested and they actually used a little stun gun on her because she was going against it. But then my buddy posted a picture, that video posted a picture of Fauci sitting between two people with his mask uh -oh, off right. yes. and said, Hey, what's wrong? But with what was picture? she arrested for? She did wouldn't put the mask what the crime on. Was? But I mean, what did they call that crime? Not obeying? She, Yeah, she just resisted, I think. But, because but there's the, always a story yeah. behind it. Because here's the thing. in For that kind of a, a problem, we have a traditional, our common law system has tort law, which is if you did something that put other people in danger, you are responsible. You are liable not only for 
compensating them for the damages you actually caused, but sometimes punitive damages on top of that. So, so a to make that into a crime, I would like to know. I mean, your crime is that you're required to do something that you're not doing. I mean, this is very I don't know how you're groundbreaking. Yeah. Criminal trespassing, they said, not being unmasked. Oh, okay. There we go. So the video, the I watched the video and the guy that was taping it was actually saying, All this just because she's not wearing a mask. Come on, man. And that's what that's the live commentary. Oh, but Franny. Right. There we go. Thank you. Your your fans are smarter than me, man. Look so read that. it. You got to read it. James, though. I don't have to. I could just let you get. James says that Clint's super smart and he thinks that I'm awesome. I'm just kidding. James didn't say <laughs> that at all. But since you can't like read, my mom. you don't have a clue since you can't read. I can't read. I'm uh, functionally illiterate right she now. She was arrested for trespassing, thinks she was asked to leave, and she refused. Well, they got her out of there. I can tell you that. The commentary while the guy was shooting the video was a little bit different what he was saying live i'm not uh, surprised that kind of thing i never know if it's that happened and it was seized upon by the mainstream media to make some confusing point that'll increase tension among the people or if it's a setup i never know i'd have to watch it myself well now i changed tactics a little bit because when you sent me the warning shot across the bow of i'm not feeling good i'm not feeling good I know, but you know, you might want to go a little light. <laughs> I was bringing up light topics and you go straight down. You can't help oh, it. You can't I help. Your well, brain can. My program director taught me uh -huh. in the beginning, he said, you cannot let people say stuff that you don't agree with and not say, I disagree. He said that you will own that and it's not okay. Oh, I agree with it. I'm just saying, I've got a little list of lighthearted stuff I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Monica, you can't, do it. you can't do the it. The only not lighthearted thing I want to talk about, and maybe I haven't been able to check the news, maybe these guys, I'm sure they will be able to tell me what's the latest on the great Dr. Paul. You know, he I, had a, what I looked like a video. stroke. That was hard to I, watch. Really didn't want to watch it because I think it's voyeuristic oh. and rude and I wasn't going to watch it, but I made myself watch it, I think, because I felt it was important to know the truth about something that people might yeah. be telling untruths about. But boy, it looks absolutely no question about it. What it, a period that they're recording, but hopefully he's fine. I saw him smiling with both sides of his face. I so hope I he's okay. He, that was a hard video for me to watch, though, because have you seen people with strokes before? No, not like that. My grandfather had a stroke, but he had the stroke, and then I was there shortly mm -hmm. afterwards, but not in the. I mean, he, you know, that video was him having the stroke. I know in alive. real time. That was I crazy. Just, and and I've he heard was that. confused. He was like, I can't, what I'm, what I'm hearing yeah. is not what, oh, it's just, it was hard. What it was is, is exactly what people have described who've had strokes that you start, you think you're speaking and you're saying just gibberish. And oh. uh, boy, was it Daniel McAdams who was with him? His uh, trusty sidekick was clearly scared, but yeah. I think, what, what are these guys saying? Uh, TIA, okay? Dr. Paul. Tia, TIA. I don't know what that's held on. I should have gone and got my glasses. TIA. I Not sure what that medical term means. I can't means. do it. It's, gonna make it's a medical home. term. TIA. I'm oh, look it up right okay. now. Let's just look it up and see what Cheerleaders it in the background had no masks on. TIA stroke. I don't know what that means. Huh? We'll have to look it up. This is good. Good so podcast. Happy right now. <laughs> All right. So maybe I should have just taken the day off. I especially care about JJ in the UK because he doesn't get to do the live streams that I do right. on Friday night. Uh, so it's, it's, it's my actually, way of like feeling like I'm hanging out with those guys and Franny and JJ Boogie. And now we have others joining the fun, James, and maybe even my mom. Well, let me read this to you real quick. It's called a mini stroke. It's a, it's oh, really I thought a, maybe it was a mini stroke. Yeah, yeah, it's really a major warning. A TIA is a temporary blockage of blood flow to the brain, but it's not considered major. But it's the sign that other things are coming. Well, that's great that he got ahead of it. Hopefully, maybe he didn't. I mean, a guy who's 85, you would think would be on blood thinners just generally. Although, I think you can really use natural methods for that like very oh, well let me just put it this way when you're on blood thinners they tell you not to eat leafy greens yeah and and they can measure if you have like the clotting factor and stuff like that so maybe he was trying to control 
blood clots with leafy greens and stuff and maybe now he'll just go on blood thinners who knows i'm speculating i wildly. take a i take a baby aspirin every day because i've had some blood clots oh in my legs. do you mm -hmm. yeah not that anybody take, cares no let's let's talk more about that my <laughs> migraine and your baby aspirin <laughs> she's so i i know that everybody tunes in for hardcore stuff and i, I had, might not I, post this one to you oh <laughs> are you kidding me listen i had i was going to ask you about the trump email you sent things you don't like about trump i had oh, i was going to talk to you, you about biden ukraine you're and Russia. doing that just because i've got one lobe tied behind my brain <laughs> no i wasn't so gonna have to do the trump stuff I was not going to have any pushback. I just wanted you to explain <laughs> to my listeners and your listeners the five <laughs> things you didn't like about Trump. And I did want to call out Joe Biden and the world that we live in and the hypocrisy of everybody saying that there's been collusion, quid, uh, quid pro quo over oh. here with Trump. And Joe Biden is the one that's got the ties oh. to Ukraine and Russia. Please, I really wanted to investigate the Hunter Biden thing. I really am like totally incapacitated with this little whatever it is john but, ballinger said docs call them shots across the bow thank you john nice ballinger. yeah good great let's get another yep. 10 years out of talk to paul yeah but i did a lot of work i don't know if you were in the mix back then clint but i did a lot a lot a lot of work on the bidens and ukraine and some of the stuff i was like spot on about and some i it was just too squirrely, but the it goes so deep. It goes into like billions of dollars of IMF money. It goes into billions of dollars in Privat Bank, which Kolomoisky ran into the ground and the government took it over. And now Kolomoisky is suing the government for billions. Meanwhile, Zelensky was a TV star on a station that Kolomoisky ran, kind of like Jeff Zucker and Donald Trump. And the Burisma guys were, I think Kolomoisky indirectly owned Burisma as well. There were shell companies in Cyprus and the Bidens and the Carries were knee deep in some of these transactions. Also that fucking, what was her name? <laughs> Ugh, that the ambassador, she- Your is, mom is so upset with you right now. I know, well, she's probably worried. It's like, oh, she doesn't feel good. But uh, oh. so that- that uh, ambassador, that chick, George Kent, they all came up in my story before they came up like in congressional hearings as cool. being knee deep in this stuff. Uh, Soros, amazingly, there was just so much corruption there. And the an hour like or Soros's fake anti-corruption league, which was being financed by the U.S. government as well as Soros, was pressuring the Ukrainian government to not actually investigate this stuff. I mean, it's just... It, and yeah, Franny, that's the Bidens. Franny just said the prop report broke the Hunter Biden story way long, a way long time ago. Absolutely, so, yeah, absolutely. Before the impeachment, for sure. Yeah, um, and I'll say this: since you can't fight back right now, and all your friends, your <laughs> friends can. I, I do <laughs> believe that the one of the reasons, and Trump's done a lot of the things that I don't like. And by the way, a lot of the stuff you sent, I agree with. I don't think it's the best. I don't think it's. You can read the list. I could, and I will before we get off, but I will say, though, I okay. do think it's odd when we say they're all, you know, it's all one big thing. It's all one big chess game. But Trump right now is being used to distract from Biden. He's been the the I do. I believe that Trump is either being used and doesn't know it or he truly is the anti-system and he's doing things he has to do to stay part of the game. I think Trump has a role to play. I don't know if he knows all the nuances of that role. I'm pretty sure he does not care. And I feel confident that, especially now that the Biden Poroshenko tapes came out, that the Trump uh, Zelensky tapes were completely crafted to take the sting out of the Biden Poroshenko thing. So I think Trump, I think, I think, also I honestly. I honestly think Biden is the one that is running against Trump with no expectation of winning. No. I think they allowed him to do that so that he would not go to jail for the corruption in Ukraine and China. So it looked like a political witch well, hunt when in fact it would have been a legitimate corruption probe that would not that. I mean, you know about Devin Archer. Therefore, I got to tell you this. There were four people in the Biden financial thing that had to do with, I think, some Ukraine 
and some China. But Devin Archer was also on the board with Hunter Biden. Devin Archer, Hunter Biden, James Bulger the third, Whitey Bulger's nephew, yep. and uh, Chris Hines, which is Tom, uh, John Kerry's stepson. All four of those guys, which I consider to be a complete front, were in this financial thing together. Devin Archer, along with guys he was in another financial scam deal thing with, all those guys got convicted and sentenced to jail for a major fraud. Of all the guys who got convicted, Devin Archer, a judge, reheard the case or heard the appeal. Her name was Ronnie Abrams, and she just commuted his sentence or overturned the conviction or whatever. A quick wiki search of Ronnie Abrams finds that she's married to a guy, I think his name is Greg Andre, who was number two on the Mueller investigation. So... This Devin Archer, Hunter Biden, all those connections are obviously, in my opinion, very corrupt. There's another thing with Joe Biden's brother, Jim, and I think Hunter, another fraud thing. They were deep in with that Sanford guy who was a fraudster bigger than Bernie Madoff. In, he was in Connecticut, and he had an actual financial partnership with the Bidens, this guy who's serving something like 150 years for fraud. So- the real investigation into the Bidens will never happen because Biden is running. And they, and I think that's why he's running. That's how bad it was. Well, and they opinion. messed up several times the last few weeks. And even Kamala Harris and Biden have called it the Harris-Biden ticket instead of the Biden-Harris ticket. Did they ticket. mess up or are they just no, playing games? What, I've said this. They We all know. We all know. And, hey, and just for fun. What do we it, know? You know? What do we all know? Are we, the, the, Biden's not going to be the president. If he wins, he's not going to be the president. I've said that for seven yeah. months. Yeah. He's not going to be the president. I still listen until You're it's not election even sure day. He's going to be on the ballot. I'm not even sure he's going to be one of the, the people there. Uh, go check out another podcast. Dan Bongino does a great job of the FBI, the Russian investigation that they had into Trump, the new text messages that are coming out in the FBI. And I've listened to Dan Bongino for a long time, but he's done a great job at tracking that down. Uh, but why is that? Contest. Is that topic? So important. Well, because it's the it's starting to show that it came from the White House, the the Barack Obama White House. It was a investigation. So what? It what well, was thirty over thirty million dollars spent on trying to get a that's a coup, trying to get a president that was elected out of office. That's horrible. And then they followed it up, or they were trying to in the Russian investigation. They were trying to get evidence so okay. they could impeach him. And so was the the Ukraine thing. John Jasper, this show is the highlight of my Saturday Saturday night. It's an honor to have you two and play injured. Uh, to bring it to us. Oh, hey. Actually, to tell you the absolute truth, I knew it would cheer me up. I well, thought, what am I going to do? Sit around and feel sorry for myself. I could just have a couple of Advil and some extra caffeine, and I think it would distract me. It's and been it works. proven. It's been Happy. proven that I can help your headache, <laughs> but I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> Good uh, for the head, bad for the ass. Bad for the Wow, easy. I don't know. You're a pain easy. in the ass. Easy. That is one of my mother's expressions. She's a pain in the ass. But yeah. then she stopped using vulgarity. And now everybody's supposed to stop using vulgarity. Did your mom used to mom. use vulgarity? Did she used to be yes. like a sailor's mom? Oh, yes. She what used to made... say, son of a bitch and bastards. Well, what, was, what precipitated the change? I think hearing her adult children use it, which of course is my problem. I hear my teenagers use it and I was like, no, that's why I was supposed to quit. What's up, Daryl Jackson? Thanks for joining us. Hey, Daryl. Uh, okay, Russian Biden, since that's... We'll end the show. Here's how we'll end the show today. Okay. I, I, I'll tell everybody how to find you, but right before that, I will read the things you don't like about Trump. You don't have to give feedback. <laughs> we'll okay. let it sit there for a week. <laughs> You'll get feeling better, and then next week we'll tackle it. <laughs> okay. Because if I bring it up now, you're not going to be able to help yourself, and your brain will explode. I will. My brain might explode. That is what it looked like happened to Ron Paul. Like he was like explaining the Fed and his brain exploded. And then I was noticing, it was like, which side of his brain exploded? And his the right side of his face looked a little messed up. Yeah. And I thought that means his left side of his brain exploded, which is the mathy side. I know because I have that. I think it comes from talking. If anything's going to gonna explode. It's going to be my talking to <laughs> talking to stupid people too much. You may just no. you may have a you may have one right now. Me? Oh, I love you, Clint. There is oh. absolutely no way that you do anything but make my emotional IQ and my intellectual IQ. I will be honest with you. Sometimes sometimes I ask and act and say dumb things because that's who I am. 
And then sometimes I'm educated enough to know the answer, but I just like doing oh, this. Oh yeah. No, you're a real professional. I like you're going. Real, I know what you're doing, but I have to so say, why would I have you vote a for Trump. I'm just kidding. That's what I like to do. You have a lot of friends or a lot of people that do a lot of people who want to, they want to show you the light. They want to send you books and stuff, but I won't let them because it wouldn't be as fun. Hey, I I know one thing we got to talk about. And if you're watching this and you tuned in next week, we're going to hit the the Trump stuff hard. Monica's (laughs) Monica's got one brain load tied behind her her back. And it's not a hangover. I can, that kind of play it injured. I take pride in being able to do that. But this is just like a, I don't know what the hell. Migraines. I do have one for you. You did have a tweet and you tagged me in it that Mm -hmm. you were getting some hate. Oh, what was it? I don't know. You said, Clint, I must have pissed him off. And then I said. Oh, yes. So our our last video last week, Uh there were, for the first time ever, we have have over 20 videos. Our first time ever, I got a couple of thumbs downs. That bothered you, didn't it? It really hurts my feelings (laughs) because I feel like we're all friends here. There is absolutely, I named it, like, can we all be friends, please? So I, I assume that people didn't like that I said that Ronald Reagan saved the gold standard. I, think, I mean, saved the head. Yeah. I, here's my theory on people that don't like the things that, uh, you know, us. If they don't like me, that's one thing. If they don't like you, they're stupid. If they don't like <laughs> us, I could care less. If y'all watch this and you think a thumb down hurts my feelings, uh, you can eat a bag of ass. How's that? Well, yeah. What? Oh, I said a bad word. Oh my god! Like that's a whole bad concept. That's got a lot of, a lot of imagery. Yeah. But yeah, no, 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 no. Have at it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Well, that was one of the tweets you put out there, so Clint. Uh, I think we've made some people mm-hmm. mad, and I'm okay with making people mad. But I don't. I think here's what I think. I think we have conversations that are good enough that we get people thinking, and you do introduce me to new ideas. Ice or I'm not gonna Franny ass ice or ass. I don't know about eating a bag of ice. What, <laughs> unless I, I really want to hurt your teeth. Hey, my dogs eat ice. Tell me if anybody's listening who knows whether or not it's bad for me to let my dogs eat ice. They beg for ice all day. It's not bad for their teeth or anything? I don't know. Don't listen to me. I'm not. All right. I'm ready. I think I feel like my Advil's kicked in. My Tay Hava has kicked in. And if you read, because I can't read, if you read the Trump stuff, I think we can get some. Action. And then we'll do, we'll do, uh, I want to talk about the gear where people can buy your coffee mugs and stuff too before. We oh, go. okay. Did you bring any of that you. with you? You don't have any of that with you, do you? No, but I do actually, I have some people sent me a t-shirt, the Rye Guys. Oh, you've been doing a lot of Swapcast and, and other podcasts. Yeah, so people send me t-shirts and I feel like I'll just, I'll wear them. And this one he made just for me. I wonder if you can see it. I'm going to try to see. Can you see? Nope. We see propaganda. It's, yeah, he's That's got all of these, all of these famous quotes about propaganda and prostitutes oh. and Mark Twain and stuff. It's very sweet. I like it. And prostitutes. Prostitutes. Oh, I thought he said. I'm like, where did no. that come from? What kind of podcast are you doing? Prostitutes. Uh, so Monica sent me this. I am bad. a libertarian, so I don't have any problem with prostitutes. Honest ones. <laughs> Not those line prostitutes. Not the prostitutes I've got a problem with, but the ones who. <laughs> uh, yes. So I asked Monica for the five things that uh, she didn't like about Trump, and she sent me six. And then a seventh one as a little bit of a smart <laughs> aleck. Oh, you only wanted five. Uh, so I'll just read them. And, and this is just for you. So if you want to okay. expound on them, you can. If not, you don't yeah. have to worry about it. Uh, he signed off on trillions of dollars of deficit spending pre-corona and four trillion cents all to restructure our think? economy to to fight the invisible monsters what do you think about about that i mean what could be more important than do you are you familiar with the fact that macarthur general macarthur said to john f kennedy that the only way to beat <clears throat> this country that our national defense is our economy. And if you want to actually destroy this country, you must destroy the economy. And now that's exactly what I agree with that. And that's what Trump is doing with a lot of help, 
lot, a lot of help, but he's not stopping it. He's no Batman. And that this is the beginning of the, this is the end. This is the regime change. So this you is, think it would have been, we were heading down the same road prior COVID. I was predicting this before Listen, the coronavirus. I was predicting what that what they were doing with the interest rates and everything. I said, I don't, that 2008 thing, they kick the can, they kick the can. They're 11 years into an <laughs> expansion and the interest rate is at 2%. What are they going to do when growth tops out? Like, because what happens with these business cycles well, is it'll go in a cycle. Interest. The economy always goes. In no, a cycle. I know. But normally, right. So I, I'm telling you, I was looking at this a year ago. Normally, every single time, as a matter of fact, this is the, their so-called business cycle, truly really a Fed cycle. They, at 10 years, say it peaks and yep. interest rates so interest rates are low to start out with. It gets people building, gets people building. As they build, they the Fed lets the interest rates go up a little bit to slow down the building, slow down the building. Yeah. But still, building outpaces, so production outpaces consumption or supply outpaces demand by the end of that 10-year cycle. And then it crashes. And what the Fed does is to get that start that cycle back up again, is they lower the interest rate. And I did the analysis. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate on average was, uh, uh, the Fed cut the rate by an average or a minimum of five percentage points over a two-year period to get the cycle started again. So when we hit the longest peacetime expansion, according to their record, their numbers, at 11 years last year, I said, gee whiz, <clears throat> A crash has to be coming. It has to be coming. And then I looked and the interest rates were at 2%. Yeah. So it's like, how you can't cut it at all. You're going to have to have negative interest rates. I wonder if they'll even be able to kick this can past the election. What will they do? What excuse will they use to lower interest rates before the election without betraying a collapsing economy? And this is what happened. And that's what those deficits are all about. Because if you look at it, they're not about health. They're not about health. Yeah. They, that's why there's no science behind what they're actually doing. They're quarantining everyone. They're actually stopped everybody from producing. So maybe it was just all that overproduction, or whatever. They're bailing out all their buddies in the debt. And they will, in the end, uh, oligopolize like every single industry and be the, the lender of last resort for every industry, every business that stands to, that stays standing, all the mom and pops will go away. And then... What they will have, and I include Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum as they, what they will have is they will be able to take the few businesses that remain in every space and say, hey, we want surveillance, we want cooperation, we want vax tats or retina scans or whatever. We want a highly controlled society that everyone from Brzezinski to uh, Klaus Schwab have described in detail. And that's what they're going to get. It has nothing to do with a disease and and trump is the one who's convincing that max the australian says it's a patriot appeasement appeasement program he's keeping you in line so uh, i think i know why we have come to this point in in, in our system <sighs> oh right. yeah i think i think i know why we're here do tell i think it's because being elected and keeping the power in house, the the election season now is all the time. And here's what I mean by that: we're always getting Congress is up for election. You know, we got the Senate, we got the House, we got the President. Now starts two years prior, so now everybody in power is so vested in getting elected and generating the money and the and the power, keeping hold of the power, that they have to have the economy look a certain way. And if it does tank. And instead of being a natural, nobody can come out and go, hey, I know the economy is not great, but that's a natural process of the economy. Elect me again. The cycle will come back around. We, the people, don't like that. We're like, no, it's bullshit. The economy's bad. We're voting you out. It's the economy, stupid. Well, now they're See, doing that's why I liked Harding and Coolidge and not Hoover and FDR, which we talked about last week. But Harding and Coolidge continued to hold the records for- for landslide votes. So what you're saying is a narrative that I think people want you to believe, but the, uh, maybe the world has changed so much that it's not even true anymore, but it reminds me of the no, show I Breaking Bad. Like they said that HBO wouldn't take it because it didn't have enough sex. AMC took it 
Without the sex, and it became the most popular TV show ever. It's not the people who are driving that hunger. It is the politicians who want us to think that they're doing I, it because of how we are, but it's not. I, well, what I'm saying is, I agree with that. I think I think they're having to blame the econ the natural yeah. the natural cycle, which goes up and down, the ebb and flow. When it flows, when it goes down, they can't just say. That's just the way things go. They can't just say that's the economy. I'm not actually even sure I there is much of I a think they've got a, cycle. But I, I think, think they have to Fed come cycle. up with corona. Maybe, maybe. That may be the case. But mm -hmm. whatever normally happens every eight to 10 years that we mm -hmm. know happens, we look back on history and we go every eight to 10 years, the economy goes, it readjusts itself. And instead of them saying, hey, it's an election year, but the economy's readjusting itself, they have to now manufacture things so they can say, this is why the economy is bad. It's not our policies. Reelect us. And once this crisis is passed, the economy will bounce back. I'll make it great again. I think you're probably right for and the most part. And if you don't part. think I'm right, thank you for agreeing and making me feel <laughs> smart for a little once. No, I think I think most of, I mean, when you actually talk to or try to get insight into congressmen and stuff, it's kind of like the skull and bones thing that it's not like you get the smartest people or the cleverest or the most creative or the leaders. You, th those are not the people who are who get the support for these things. It's people who are actually not smart enough to figure stuff out. They're, it's people who who think it's what you see is what you get and they do what they're doing because they don't even realize they're serving another purpose. And actually, even the really smart <clears throat> ones, if their egos are big enough, they do, they, they will um, play the game without thinking they could not be manipulated. But in the end, they are manipulated. Now, Trump, I think, knows that there is a game to be played. He's playing it. I'm not sure he knows why. I, and I'm certain that he either doesn't care or he's fine with it. Well, and, but you think of this, once you get elected into Congress, and I can't remember the number, so somebody will correct me, and, and I'm going to get it wrong, so I won't say a specific number, but it's thousands and thousands of dollars a week you have to raise to keep the, to keep the job. For re-election purposes, you have to start raising money day one. To get reelected, but, but see, Trump, Trump won I'm just the presidency. About, I'm just I know, I know what you're saying, but let's just think about a little bit something weird. <clears throat> Trump won the presidency without spending a single campaign dollar, and he'd never been a politician before. So, I, I think I know the answer to that. But isn't Ooh. that doesn't what do you think that the answer is? Well, you're not going to like. He didn't spend any money. Zero. I wrote an entire none of his expose. personal, none of his personal money. No, he personal. didn't raise any money. There was nothing. No, That's I mean out of his just, pocket. Right? No, personal. nothing. Nobody. So <laughs> normally, campaign finance is hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, and he, with him, it was zero. There were no. I, I don't. Maybe there were packs in the end, but he he took no money. There was no campaign fund. Nothing. I wrote a go. I had a whole blog post call, caused this called Trump is is spending zero and winning. And I just would update it all the time. And you could still find it on monicaparezshow.com. Just go put in the search box zero, Z-E-R-O, and you'll find this really lengthy article that I put in there. And it was, uh, I think it's because Jeff Zucker just told people night and day, Trump is the worst nightmare for liberals. And, and that got all the Republicans off the couch. And I and that's how it works. But I'm just saying the campaign finance thing may be true generally, but it's only true because it's it's uh you know it's allowed to be true. If the powers that be wanted to take that away from See, us, I'm looking, us or the, them, I'm looking at the New York Times, it says he spent sixty five million dollars of his own cash. Well short in twenty sixteen. Mm -hmm. In twenty sixteen. Yep, this article mm -hmm. was written in December of twenty sixteen. So, but it says, well, you tell, well, first of all, that was a debt that was repaid, right? I so it wasn't it was. really his own cash. And he said a lot of that money went into paying, and that's weird. I better not read that because I'll go down a rabbit hole about him paying his companies. He said he paid his companies that actually. Okay, well, I wrote this in February. Uh, oh, you put your glasses on. We're in trouble, folks. Clint has I'm screwed feeling, up. I'm way feeling it's better. like Superman putting the cape on. Here come the glasses. Bam. The next one, though, and while you're looking that up, is going to be a pretty good one for you, gun owners well, can, out there. Can can we put can we put it here? Can we put? Can one I here? make a? Can I make a? Um, <clears throat> is it an article or a podcast or a meme or something? It's my article. Ooh, I'm sorry. 
Look at these crazy giant AOC glasses. I have this very hip. Like, yeah, you got it right guy. here. You crazy ass glasses. <laughs> They're so crazy. Uh, it says host to chat. I don't know how to show that. I don't know if somebody else in, uh, can see it. You sent me a private. Oh, message. you know what? I will send it to the hidden Fran and she can put it up. Yeah. Or you can send it to me through Facebook and I can grab it and put it up. Either well, one. I just put it through text. Too. Yeah, but I can't grab that. So send Ew. it to Fran. Uh, and while you're sending it to Fran, I'll read the second one that you don't like about Trump because we're going on 40 minutes. And I got to be honest, for somebody that wasn't feeling good. Sorry. You're doing really well. I perked up. I think I wasted a lot of time in the beginning, but that's because no, I was waiting for that Advil to kick in. And my like, people like the witty banter. They like our. <laughs> they like the chemistry on the online. So we're fine. Uh, the okay. sanctions operation uh, legend, which is cleaning up illegal guns in cities. There's no such thing Hold as illegal on. guns. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You're reading that. I was like, yeah, I got a bone about that to pick. Right. Read that. Legal guns and feds should not be law enforcement. Hey, was, Clint, can yeah. you please tell me what's an illegal gun? Oh, I agree. Me and you would be agreed on this one. Yeah, I agree. So he's sending feds into cities to grab guns. That's what he's doing. They're pulling, they're defunding the police on the local level. Right. And then the feds are going in disarming the people who live in those little those cities where there are no legal guns. So so yeah, so maybe some criminals have them, but they're probably not going in there starting gang wars trying to disarm the drug dealers. Every chick or old lady or a uh, peaceable guy who lives in a bad neighborhood because just doesn't have a lot of money or whatever, he probably needs a gun. And who's allowed to have guns in those places? Only cops and retired cops. I'm from New York. There's only cops and retired cops. And they're going and taking those guns away. So now what do you have? You have a real problem. You have anarchy. You have defunded police. You have disarmed citizens. What do you think is going to happen? Martial law. But, the I feds mean, coming down. A federal department of police. I There's going to be a federal department of police. I think, and that that part me and you agree with. So the questions and stuff I'm about to say is just simply for rhetorical purposes. Yeah. But I mean, if you've got felons with guns or people doing crimes, you know, drug dealers with guns, I think, and, and drive-by shootings. And I'm just saying there's some of those when they do the big sweep of the net, they're getting some of those guns. Let off me just street. ask you a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, if, if it. you are, you should not I would say uh -huh. it's unconstitutional and it's definitely illegitimate to take away somebody's liberty mm -hmm. or property without due process of law, which is like is twenty dollars worth of value. But if right? A, That's if a, seven a convicted th felon. They've been through the due process. If they, of law. yeah, if right. they have lost their gun rights yeah. through a jury trial, right? Then yes, I think that you. I think a lot could, of those guns come from felons. I don't think all of them. Yeah, no. So what well, maybe felons, but I'm saying you need to be adjudicated that you have lost that liberty right. specifically. So if I commit a crime with a gun, what should happen when they say they collected that gun? Yes, I would say I I think that's what they're calling no, I, that. If I collect if here's where I think the rub is. Here's where I think no, the rub no, is. No, no. But here's where I think the rub is. I don't think, first of all, you should, you know, the registration of guns, I think is BS. So what I think they're doing is I think they're getting Clint committing a crime with a gun. The gun's not registered, and that's illegal. When in reality, the illegal part is Clint committing the crime, whether it's with a baseball bat or a gun or a knife. That's the illegal thing. I don't think the gun— Look, I think the only way you—I think the only thing that you should lose a gun for an adjudicated in a jury trial is if you use guns to commit crimes. I would say that is the only yeah. way— where it's a suitable punishment. I agree. Look at us. We agree 100. percent That's what yes. I'm saying. The act is a crime. What I use to do yeah, it but with I, is but not. But this sweep, these sweeps aren't about people who have gone through the due process and lost their rights to have guns. These are cities <laughs> that have blanket gun control. That's so. That to me is the part I don't get. If you need more help in a gun controlled city, then the gun control laws aren't working, and so you should. Well, that's go what back, I'm saying. Change it. And, Bill Barr and Trump are exacerbating the situation by taking guns away for illegal guns away. I from agree. People who Obama, may be trying to defend themselves, or it could be they've had forty or fifty years of being run by Democrats, and the and Trump and Barr are trying whatever well, they can to fix them. it. That's what I'm saying. Why don't elect don't, somebody don't, different? Whoa. 
Right. You just, why don't you just. Elect somebody different. It's been run by just 50 years. Just don't go there. Don't well, go there. There's no reason for the feds if you learn, to go that in there. Party's, that party's not done, done you right. Uh, number three. Now, I'm not sure this is something he's done. It's something he threatens, which I'm not sure means anything. You're smiling. I can't read it. Oh, it says, not sure my phone can do it. Yeah. Um, I've got you the link. I'll do it later. But if, if okay. you want to send it to me through I'm Facebook. I'm going to send it to Messenger, you through Facebook. And I can grab it. Do a, Messenger. Do a Messenger. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, but uh, so this is something he's threatened. So I'm not sure it's something that he's actually done. He consistently threatens to regulate media. This will bring back a kind of fairness doctrine, which will be welded, which will be wielded by both sides against yes, us all. I what, agree with that I, too. Yes. What I don't like about it, whether he's actually done it or not, he's not is it. that he has, he has, right. He has um, generated advocacy for, for regulation of speech. Well, and okay. we, among, the only thing we're going to disagree you know, on that I, is I don't think he's the first president. I think the media has been advocating for people for different, right, different purposes and for here's the thing. decades. When, when Obama said he was going to bring a fairness doctrine back, people on the right went absolutely bananas because they realized that a fairness doctrine would would mean that cities would have to subsidize liberal radio broadcasts, for example. That's the way it was before... Um, Reagan got rid of that, right? And then, so then, oh shit! Sorry. Did you send me something? I did, but it didn't work. So hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, then, uh, so now you have this guy who basically has a cult of personality, where every time he does something that on its face makes no sense at all, people say, "Oh, trust the plan." Trump is Batman, whatever. And and I'm saying, you know, he gets people to commit to this position that conservatives need protection from the government by regulating the speech. And, and that to me is whether he gets it done or the next guy gets it done, you're going to have a whataboutism thing where people say, well, oh, you agree. were in favor of it. He I is agree. so influential that he is, he is paving the way for that. Well, me and you will agree uh, on that. And I think I just posted it. I just posted that article. If anybody wants to go look at it. Uh, so it's there. Okay. It'll take a minute to pop up. Um, I agree with you. I hate when he says that kind of stuff. I don't agree with it. But here's the issue. I'll ask you a question now. I need a solution from Monica. You and I talk about things that we wish were different. And and, I, and I, I've always tried to say we have to make some decisions based on the world we're in in order to get to the world we want, which means we can't go from the shitty place we're at to perfect what I want. We have to find ways to make little strides, which means I have to make a decision based off the real world I'm living in today. My question right. to you is how do you fix the media? How do you get past? The, I mean, because to be honest with you, it is pretty blatant whether it's right wing or we don't call things opinions much anymore. I, I respect I, the I will tell you. Yeah. That. What you want to do is, and I hate to ask you that with a headache. <laughs> no, I feel that much better now. Okay. Thank you. So, what <clears throat> you want to do is, first of all, we're talking about social media primarily. Social well, I, no, media. No, I'm not. Is, I'm talking about NBC, CBS, ABC, uh, uh, because they, they, they. I think there was a study said that 91 percent of the coverage that they have given Trump so far has been negative. There's no way one person can get 80 to 90 percent all bad headlines unless you just don't like their agenda. It's it is it's so obvious to me that the slant nowadays when you have it's a mostly a peaceful presentation and behind you something's on fire. That's a CNN headline with the banner across the bottom. That's propaganda. That's your wheelhouse. I think a lot of yeah, media yeah. is being no, used. No, right. I got it. Okay. So I I will tell you I'll tell you how and what to do. So in the social media realm and the mainstream media realm, what in the social media realm, it's very clear if you dig in even a little bit into Google, Facebook. I haven't really cracked the code on Twitter, but given that like Saudi Arabia owns mo a lot of it, like I'm sure it's in there, is that the these companies were chosen. They were incubated. Their patents are protected. They have all of this government advantage and they go in and they censor and suppress and all that kind of stuff. So 
if there weren't all of those advantages that they have, which are the exact things that make it so at your grocery store, people can hand out political flyers and you can't stop them or the grocery or the um, beggars or whatever can stand there and you can't stop them because those grocery stores use the police force and use other kind of government and that's how they've adjudicated it. So you should have freedom of speech in those places. I don't think private companies should be required to provide that. But but other private companies are, and I don't even consider it a private company because they've been incubated, nurtured, subsidized by the government. And then the startups who do not get those advantage advantages can't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you've suppressed all competition for those ideas. Similarly, in the mainstream media, there is a long history of government charters. There was an early, early thing of when it used to be where it started in radio, where if you broadcast on a channel, you owned that channel. It was mm -hmm. just like any place where you squat or homesteaded. And the court ruled that they were going to start licensing it because they didn't like the opinions of the people. Should opinions be allowed to be broadcast? No, we need to control the opinions. So once you do that, it's just like a bank. Once you control who's allowed to operate in that space, that space pivots to the guy who can take that power, that license away. Well, and it also, they also got involved because if your signal went so far and you're from Atlanta and I'm hearing stories and stuff about Atlanta, that's great. But if I'm in Chattanooga or Knoxville at certain times of day, I don't care about the Atlanta traffic. So they made them power down a lot of times to control that they, footprint. Yeah, that's they did. In, yeah. In, in Mexico, they don't, they don't do that, right? So like in Texas, you could get all these Mexican stations would just step on the clear channels. And there are a few clear channel stations. WSB is a clear channel. I don't mean clear channel, the company owned. Yeah. I mean, they're called clear channel stations. They get a special chart or whatever. I don't, I mean, the, there may be, you know, I'd have to think through that. A but how do you motivate to, NBC to tell the you news? Can't, you don't, you don't. That's not what you do. That is not the answer I'm telling you. So the answer yeah. is that competition is restricted. And that's why they, so you, if what you need to do is unfetter the whole thing to have absolutely no charters or licenses or government controls on anything. I don't, I mean, I got taken down from WordPress because- Steve, but that's never going to happen. So that solution- is, I but, just but it's yeah. never going to happen if you say it's never going to happen. So well, no, what you want, what you're, want, so you're advocating because we, we, we live, this is exactly the problem with Trump is that Trump has convinced people who used to have principles, hey man, that's hopeless. I'm going to get you I don't think yours. It, I disagree with that's that. That's what he's, I've said I that for the longest time. Yeah, that but, is who but Trump that's is. Not, that I'm going to get Trump. you yours. That didn't start with Trump. That's been going he, on for 20 or 30 years in he politics. Got, he got the right to start talking like that. I want mine. He brought identity politics to the right. What about you? You know, you yeah. aren't you sick of whatever? He brought all of that pragmatism to the right instead of principles. Principles on a longer highlight, a longer timeline are pragmatism. So he is he is confusing people. Okay. So my question is: did Bush do that? Did George Bush do that? Did Nobody, Obama do that? Or did it start the right to no, be identity their, politics? No, no, convince their followers, their team, because I will submit the Democrats. Have Obama been doing is that. the left. Of course. That's, That's what I'm saying. Trump has changed the right from being the party of principle. The Republicans, if they were the people who were voting, thought they were voting out of ideological principles. Right. Into a party where he got people to say exactly what you just said. It's hopeless. The you, principles, the ideals are yeah. hopeless. I'm gonna get you, you yours. Do, I'm going you look, to you know what the trade barriers are the perfect example. We used to want free trade because that was just. And right. he said, you know what? Screw that. I'm gonna get you your job back. Who cares if people pay more for whatever? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna forget it. Forget it. It's yeah. time for you to get yours. So my question is then. If we see we were getting our ass kicked, even since uh, towards the end of Bush, we're getting our ass. I mean, you. We look back on the Obama administration. Some of the are stuff you that thinking I'm advocating for past Republicans? No, 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 I'm no, not. No, Bush no, gave I, us curly. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I don't. I don't think. Okay, I don't yeah, think you're finish. Yeah. I don't. I think. But if you look back on where we were headed, we were going. I don't know who we could have put up because every time we put up somebody like McCain, Ron who I know Paul. you had. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Ron wait a minute. Paul. Wait a second. Ron hold on a second. Paul. 
Let me see. Mitt Romney, we we put Mitt Romney up. Every Republican we put up, the media that we just wait, hold on a second. Let me finish. The media that we just said that is, you know, slanted to helping the left, they were Mitt Romney was great until he runs for office. Then they and I know it's part of politics, but it's different because 80 to 90 percent of what they were saying about Mitt Romney was fabricated BS, too. No, I we were going to get eight more years of that left well, stuff. The left they idea. had to do for Ron Paul, who won Iowa. He won the first primary against Mitt Romney and he won Maine also. And they didn't come out with the truth about Ron Paul until June. That if the if the if the media on the right had treated Ron Paul even with the fear and attack that they treated Trump, they gave Trump the airtime and the left gave yeah, him I the airtime too. Yeah. The left said nothing good about him. <laughs> the right didn't say anything good. So you have an example right here of Trump where both the left and the right criticized him constantly. Nobody, nobody helped him in the media, according to you. No, no, according didn't. to your no, side. Right. Fox so News there you have podcast. they barely did it. They gave yeah. him that little thing, but they were they were full of never Trumpers. The right was full of it. So all of a sudden we have a highly biased thing where unprecedented, where the bias was from both sides against one guy, but you know what? They covered it. Yeah, well, they, they covered, covered it. Because it. And they, if they covered Ron Paul, he would have been our president and things know. would be a lot different right now. So we now. got two comments. Absolutely true. We got two comments and you can't read, so you got to let me read them. Okay. Okay. Uh, and John Jasper, I agree with what you're saying. He said, it's no good arguing that it's never going to happen. First, you understand what happened, what should happen, then compromise to get close. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying you can't go from nothing to everything's deregulated right now. I'm saying you have to see where you're at. Where do you want to get to? And you have to, since this isn't possible now, how do we start getting closer to that now? I think that's the Aristotle thing where whatever, where you are and where you want to be, overshoot the goal of where you want to be. So maybe I'm an anarcho-capitalist, but I would settle for <coughs> restoring the Constitution. Well, I, if I want to lose 30 pounds, but I've got to put a plan in place and lose a little bit. Of, to I lose can't 60? just lose 30 pounds. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all fine. Maybe. But I would, I always say, uh, or I coined the St. Peter test, the St. Peter test. When <laughs> you face St. Peter on your judgment day, what is your story going to be? You're going to say, well, I compromise. I like to vote the lesser of two evils because I don't like evil, but I like less evil better than more evil. Mm -hmm. And I think St. Peter is going to say, what the hell do you care? What happens on earth? Why don't you just do the right thing? That's what you're there for to see if a little temptation of evil is good enough well, for you. And to tell you the truth, where we are right now, no I think- purity. I mean, you're, everything that- there is absolutely okay. you can stick to your principles right now and i'll tell you something i thought for the longest time maybe i am morally obliged to engage in a tax revolt to not work in this system because of all the stealing and killing they do with my money mm -hmm. and you know what i if i were gonna take a biblical uh, bent in how i think about what's happening right now i would say this is sodom and gomorrah and god or the great flood or whatever this is a scenario where god looked at our materialism and our compromise with evil and everything that everyone does why why do you want to compromise with these people because you want to keep living in your house without bugs and without having to grow your own <laughs> yeah, food yeah right that's exactly right so i'll grow we, my own we, food though you're, we're bit, we we have sold our souls to the devil for this little bit of comfort, a little bit of air conditioning, which I personally love. But You're that we desert. have done that. You have to have air conditioning in the desert. So, but I'm just saying that that now it really feels like God has abandoned us. You know, I don't want to put words in We've his mouth or anything, God. but. And I'm saying that, right, like it was the simplest thing. It was like, why are you voting for the lesser? Because you want to keep your, you know, you your do little realize people your could picket look at, fence. But people could look at, at uh, your candidate, Paul, and go, they could find their, with their definition of things they don't like about him that are evil, that they don't like that would have, because there's no policy that's not going to affect somebody adversely. There's, you can't have a, there's nothing you're going to do in life but, that's going to make everybody. what are you, a subjective There's an Egan. But you can't make everybody even. It's not you just nobody wants to be even. There are there are foundational principles of law and morality. I mean, do you understand how religion works? All religions have the same basic tenet, and that is the tenet. But we and you have talked that, about this. Who defines those? Who has who defines? I'm the saying definitions? they're objectively true. 
So you're a okay. subjectivist, which makes you on the left. And that is what Trump and has no, done to not. the right. No, no, that no, is what, what Trump has done to the right. It's made them subjectivists. But what I'm saying to you is whoever's in charge controls the definitions. And that's not no, the way it should be. Wrong. I, I'm agreeing Absolutely with you. Absolutely not. You and St. Peter <laughs> control the definition. There's two things. All the, all the religions in the world, basically, or all the really major religions, have two tenets, which we have government supposedly to do. One right. is you need to control your behavior. Right. And the other is you need to help people who are less fortunate than you. Absolutely. All the big religions have that. And then I would say on the political equivalent to that is Murray Rothbard's great fundamental law, don't touch me or okay. my but, stuff. But here's what I'm Those saying. Those are right. that one is a moral imperative that is self-evident mm -hmm. and the other but, is the legal truth that is self-evident. Okay, but I'm agreeing with you, but you got to hear me out. What I'm saying to you is when you say help other people, there are people out there that would look at that and go, okay, I believe helping other people, teach them how to take care of themselves so they're better helped. And other people go, give them what they need so they never yes. have to want for anything. And, and I'm those saying, definitions both can I'm think they're doing the morally the right thing. Individuality, individual solutions is the best, best way to approach it. What we cannot compromise with is using guns to right. steal and kill in my name against people okay. who have <clears throat> not earned that punishment you, I'm for asking something Monica they Perez. did wrong. And that's all that I object to. I'm asking Monica Only Perez, thing I object to. of the things that you said, the two things, especially we'll keep with the helping other people. If I came to you and I said, this is, I think, how we should help other people. And you go, I don't agree with that at all. Right. Hold on a second. I doesn't make me necessarily evil. And I don't think it makes you necessarily evil. But what it means is we automatically diverge on what we consider moral. Absolutely. At that point. Fantastic. And when you start putting a big government together, that's where you have teams. And that's but I'm not, that's not government. That's religion. Uh, yeah. Okay. But then we try. That's to what I'm saying is that religion and government are two different things. And you have two cultures, two separate cultures. But you have to vote cultures. in government. You don't have to vote Religions. in religion. You don't have to vote. You can recognize That's fundamental law. I will not compromise when it comes to stealing and killing in my name. Holy so shit. We're past an hour and this is so much fun. Oh Holy my gosh. Crap. Really? I can't, I'm I telling you this. I hate to do I, this. A good thing for Advil. We we have one more one more comment. I want to say, uh, Franny said, "All publicity somehow is good publicity." No, and I think we're going back to the media. I agree. Trump wrote a book on that. I agree, but all publicity is good publicity when you're trying PT Barnum, but it's not good for making decisions. Publicity is publicity. It's not knowledge, and well, it's not news. Well, that's why voting is hopeless. That's why the, this idea of democracy just keeps people from to accept fundamental injustice because you think that most people would rather have it a different way. No, I don't think no, most no. People, I think I'm right and most people are wrong. Is that bad? Hey, that's completely fine. <laughs> just don't use guns against innocent people. I agree don't with use that, force yeah. and especially don't say that I approved of it because I will never approve of it. They Trump can say that you approve of what he's doing, but he can't Some of and it, not St. All of Peter. It. Not all of it. I'm just saying whenever they're using the force of government and to every steal from people has. or kill. Of course, That's it's right. a fundamentally flawed system. Although I would accept, if you want to talk about compromise, I would accept restoring the Constitution. I would accept that. Okay. I think you should run for office. Ah! God, I found a little thing um, from when I was like in seventh grade or even fifth grade. It was like a little, they asked me to fill out for school, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And one of the questions was, what would you do if you were president? And I actually wrote in my little pencil, quit on day one. Did you really? <laughs> yes. So I should find it. I don't understand. Out. Have you ever been active in a political campaign? I went <clears throat> to march against Obamacare in D.C. three times. And uh, my mother, I think, put me on a ballot once on a Rights Life ticket. But I, I mean, have you never got behind that. a candidate to like help them in there? Because you seem great. You seem like I only locally. Paul. Have you not was... found anybody locally where you live that kind of, you know, that third uh, party? You know, I... It would not really have to be third party. I have considered that like as not like historically, only now as things are becoming clear to me, and I've mentioned that what I would do if I have the energy when this is when I my kids are out is to like buy maybe buy a farm outside of Austin or some yeah. other place I could agree with my husband, and then take very seriously being active in local politics to make sure that my rights are not encroached upon. 
I just but think you would be a they, great person on a because I hate to say this. A lot of people get paralysis by analysis and they can't make a decision. I don't think you would have that problem. <laughs> well, every decision would be judged. I would judge every decision by that basic princ pr principle, which means look at Catherine Bernard. Catherine Bernard was a delegate she, out of Atlanta. She was a delegate, a Republican delegate, and she cast a vote. I believe she cast her vote for Ron Paul. And they said to her, you have to cast a vote for Mitt Romney. I think this is the story. I've heard her tell it publicly, so you could clarify with her. Uh, and she said, no. And they said, we will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you do what we say. <laughs> and if you Game don't, <laughs> yeah, or isn't that from the Bible? Yeah, and yeah. if you don't, you know, you will never, ever get political office. And I used to support her candidacy every time she ran just for city council in her town in Georgia. She would, she's a lawyer. She used to come on my show. I, I believe that our, that her coming on my show when I filled in for Eric Erickson once, <clears throat> defeat got the no-knock raid law defeated in Georgia. It was just some weird thing. I filled in this day. I never filled in for him again, though. Like, I don't know why. But uh, so I used to support her and boy, she never got anywhere. But she's a great lawyer and a great person and she's very politically active, but she never. So you, I guess you have to compromise to to get office and to that get, just to get inside in and control. influence anything. It seems if you don't but look at screwed. look at the world right now, we are know. in lockstep. And everyone is operating outside of the Constitution. Isn't this enough yeah. for you to realize yes. that it's all a freaking scam? It, it, yes. And I keep coming back and we can't do it right now because I got two more things and we got to write the show up. All right. Go but ahead. What do we? I, I get it. So what do we do? Just fuck it. I mean, like, well, I'm go just home. Saying, my Stop question. working. Allow yourself to starve to death. Like yes, that is a, that is what St. Peter is going to want viable. you. To, I got kids. It, I'm not doing that. That's, that's I understand. I yeah. understand. Let them make their own I'll decisions. Kill, yeah. And when they get older, but I'm yeah. just saying. It, Until it, then, it, I'll it, kill other what, people for myself. I mean, that's what like Gandhi is Gandhi and MLK, you know, that's yeah. the kind of thing they said, like, Hey, that is yeah. what peaceful resistance is. Like, I'll take it. They're not going to build I, a statue to me. I can tell you that. Stop with me uh two things your opinion on the supreme court justice do you have an opinion one way or the other or is it I think not matter? they intentionally picked a person who would be incredibly polarizing i knew when i saw that she had a special needs kid i was like she has a kid with down syndrome which she's is adopted. A, a, no she's, the she's down adopted. kid is adopted. no no she's, she adopted she's, two, two other kids, kids. yeah no, but the other one, and I, that's a lightning rod for abortion because, I mean, people have actually criticized me to my face for not having an abortion because my son has Down syndrome. That was when I lived in California when, really? Sarah, when Sarah Palin was on the ticket. I'm telling you, partisan politics makes people sick. Oh, my sick. God. They just hated her so much that they had to associate everything. You know, that's what I was saying about Trump and and wanting to censor the media. And Can stuff. you just throw Biden in every now and then to make me feel like it's just not hating Trump? Damn it. Um, no, I'm not hating him. I'm just saying that cult of personality, I you know, that, that stuff can make people forget. Well, I will say but, I agree. One thing is I do yeah. feel like we have been sucked into the we're going to fight the way they've been fighting now. And now it's our turn. That doesn't that does not bode well for how the, the political and then, power. Dialogue. I agree. After with you. Trump, you're going to have Democrats next? for 12, 12 years. But what's and next even over. after Trump? I mean, it's going to be how does the, how does world the public government. debate get any better? It's just this? world government. It's yeah. that once the police are up at the national level, then your your issue between state and national is really going to be national versus uh, big philanthropy. Which I but think you were telling me world. about people without votes, people in California that were getting in your face about your son. So I, I interrupted yeah. you. No, no, that's right. But that chick, Amy Coney Barrett, mm -hmm. uh, she, I, I can't imagine that she ever, ever, ever gets confirmed. I thought but, she'd be an easy one. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, because be they don't need a supermajority? They're ready. They got the votes. Oh, they have the votes? Okay, They've got sorry. the votes. They're so putting it on I, the fast track. Right. Oh, okay. I, I have not been following the news the past couple of days. I didn't Brilliant. even have a show yesterday. Um, okay, well, I figured it'd be very polarizing. And mm -hmm. but I have to say, there's one thing that she has said that I 100% agree with. But people who are um, in favor of legal abortion absolutely hate this. She says, like Brett Kavanaugh said, he considers Roe versus Wade settled law. Mm -hmm. Now. Roe is totally unconstitutional. There is absolutely no right to privacy in the Constitution. If there were, you could grow your own pot and smoke it. 
-hmm. there and that is federally illegal which would I, I mean i don't think state laws have to be constitutional but federal laws do and that federal law absolutely violates any kind of privacy that would be inherent in the constitution so it is bad law and if states wants to do abortions that is where it, that would be i i think it's abhorrent but it would be constitutional if, if states want to legalize murder it's that right. would be constitutional it is constitutional so she says bad law is not settled law and she's an originalist so she wants to look at the constitution its original meaning and she wants to say if it's a bad ruling, you don't have to stand by precedent, which just stands to reason. And they're I agree also, with her 100%. They're getting ready to hammer her about being Catholic. They are going to use her religion against her as a weapon. It's already started in the headlines. They're talking about her being this religious well, she's extremist. she's charismatic Catholic, yeah. which is weird. That's a weird one. You I'm know? just saying I mean, I, it's going yeah, to be another way to divide so, us. So she will... There is a good chance that she will misrepresent what I would think of as... You know, as a traditionalist, I would. Somebody called me that. I don't they know. They call her an Orthodox, I think, Catholic. Oh, is she Orthodox? No, I think, she's charismatic no. Catholic. What do they orthodox call Orthodox is Maybe like not. Greek or Russian. Charismatic okay. Catholic. Okay, I believe it's it charismatic, where they will sing and everything and whatever and raise their hands. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know a ton about the that stuff, but that kind of smacks a little bit of Protestant kind yep. of thing to me. And so I think that she's in a good position to misrepresent traditional Catholicism. Well, but I don't, I mean, whatever. I just, I think that they're going to make it, uh, it's going to be unpleasant. I think she was chosen deliberately for that. If, if abortion actually were in jeopardy as a law of the land, they wouldn't even be considering her that there's just no way we're ever abortions ever going to be illegal in this country. Yeah, and I'm trying to find the, the term that. But they, they use. should allow states to make it illegal if they want. I mean, if they, you could talk about you could really. It's one of the very few issues. It's a competing rights issue, like immigration. It can people can disagree on it. Yeah, I can't find it. What they called her? Hey, one other topic I wanted to bring up with you before we leave. Sure. Uh, I, I want I want everybody to know where to find your podcasting gear. But did yeah, you cool. hear about Joe Joe Rogan podcast? Have you heard the latest on him? All I heard was that he was moving to Austin. He moved. It's done. Got his studio up and running. You know, the, the $100 million deal with Spotify. But now, yeah. now there's a good size group of, or there's a group of Spotify employees that are threatening to boycott working if they do not have editorial license with his content because they don't like what he is saying. And they are telling Spotify that we need to edit and have edit licensing with the Joe Rogan podcast. Welcome to the big boy. I think that's going to be fun to watch. Well, but Joe all, Rogan is a badass. I hope he doesn't fall for it. When he signed up for Spotify, he allowed them to curate the podcast that would be posted. So they they he allowed them to take mm -hmm. his more controversial podcast out of his feed. Oh yeah, read. all right. But so, they're wanting to control what he's saying going out. But like, look, yeah. he's. But he's but he controls it himself. He backed away from the moon landing as fake because Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, came on the show and explained it to him, blah blah. And and he has freaking Edward Snowden on and just lets him run roughshod. Edward Snowden is a fraud. Oh, so what? I mean, it's total fraud. Total ridiculous well, actor. I would have thought you would have been. Oh, see, this is no. a topic. That's why I love talking to you. I would have yeah. thought you would have been like he's my was one of the guys that's really you know that's opened uh, opened the world up to truth. Good. No, I predicted exactly what he was going to do, and it's exactly what he did. I figured him out within one week, and I have to take my hat off to Nomadic Everyman because he got it in one day. Is that the way he was talking? that in that first 10 minute interview, he said, I don't care what the people decide, but what the government is doing is illegal and we need to have a conversation about it. I was like, that's just mob rule. I said, so you know what's going to happen? They're going to take those illegal practices and they're going to legalize them. And that's exactly what they did with the USA Freedom Act. That's the, the license they So he's another the pawn in the game, you think? Is he a pawn? He's, yeah, he's an actor. He's not even, I mean, he's so full of shit. And he was never in that Russian airport ever. 
So I don't know if he's ever even in Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a Trump edition. We got to have. I want to have a Biden, you Russia, Ukraine edition. Now we got to have it. We got to have a Snowden edition. Oh my gosh! Don't even get me started on Brett Kavanaugh. Bad Brett Kavanaugh. What? Mm -hmm. He's a Clinton shill. That's why they acted like he was racist, so he would get in instead of acting like a Clinton shill. Because then the Republicans would have been like, "Why do you have a Clinton shill as the as the Supreme Court pick for a Republican?" Brett Kavanaugh. You young racist. lady, you young lady are a pot stirrer. You are. No, you, I am a researcher. Right here, seventy five minutes into you it. You are a pot stirrer. I don't have. I'm I have a, a headache. Here's what you. Oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm a hustler. Stir the pot. <laughs> Uh, you think I'm a, I just hustled you. You're the person that goes. Yeah, no, I've can't never, you tell how much I've never I'm played feeling? pool before? But if you got twenty yeah. bucks, yeah, I, I could used, try to figure it out. I mean, what end of the stick do you use? Could can you, you tell how much better I'm feeling? Hell yeah, I can tell. You're on your game now. You know, migraines, caffeine helps migraines. So yeah, I that's why they put it in uh, migraine out. medicine. Yes, Excedrin. If I had it, but I'm traveling. See. This is not my normal I setup. You said so. you had a uh, migraine medicine that makes you loopy. Mm. I have migraine medicine, which I never, ever, ever, ever take. But like at midnight last night, it started then. I just, oh, I couldn't stand it. So I took that thing and I fell asleep immediately. So I was a little worried about taking it this morning. Hey, my daughter curiously suggested, she's like, you know, I heard THC is good for that kind of thing. I was is. like, it is. My daughter's trying to be a bad influence on me. Is it? It is? Is that what you said? It is? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> truth dar. And Fanny said truth dar. I got truth dar. That's true. Hey, speaking of truth dar. I found out there's a word for that. It's called, I used to, I coined truth dar, but it's called discernment. Does that make you a truth darling? Truth darling <gasps> t-shirt? That's what it is. Brand. You're a truth darling. Right. I like that. I love that. You're welcome. Hey, I'm okay, gonna uh, put that in my glossary. Make that a, a little. Put that on a little, you know, t-shirt or something. Hey, do uh, if I wanted to get a, a mug or a t-shirt, or if I wanted extra stuff and have some sort of Patreon parties, how do I find all of that stuff? <laughs> you are too much. Well, I will tell you. I'm going to tell you everything about my please stuff. at thepropreport.com. You can find all of my propaganda report work. Uh, with one exception. So that's my drive time news blast, which is daily show. And also all of my merch. I've got mugs, I've got stickers, I've got t-shirts. Just go to thepropreport.com. You can find all that stuff. If you just want to hear my podcast free, go to any podcasting platform, propaganda report feed, please subscribe. So we move up in the, in the searches. And then if you want cocktail parties, um, and the patron 15, which is 15 minutes a day of extra news. That's going to be completely commercial free going forward. You're going to have 45 minutes of commercial free live, not live, but commercial free news of the day, almost live at patreon.com slash propaganda report. And 45 finally, minutes every day, every day, 45 minutes, commercial free, every freaking day. People don't understand how much time 45 minutes takes. Yeah. Overall. It takes, I spend five hours a day. On yeah. It. It takes five time. hours a day. And it's for uh, just so that you don't have to listen to the mainstream media. So I try to take the biggest stories of the day so that when you're sitting to dinner and your mother-in-law is yammering about who she wants to vote for, you can be like, that's the I don't have a mother-in-law. So, and then I have to say I have a couple of video outlets too. So here you can find all of this stuff and other stuff I do on youtube.com slash Monica Perez. But Binkley and I, my co-host on the Propaganda Report, just uh, were invited to and accepted to do a Rockfin channel, Rockfin. So every week we drop a one hour video where his research is through the roof. And of course, so are my insights. So if you join Rockfin, which it, 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 you have to pay for it, but you get Sam Tripoli with Whitney Webb, like you get a lot of guys I love, Jimmy Dore. So you get a lot of exclusive content there. But boy, am I working a lot. Have you ever heard of Parlor, which is the I and have. Rumble and Rumble for videos? I never heard. Oh, Rumble. Yeah. Dan Bongino well, now, just got into it. Now I'm kind of exclusive on Rockfin, and Ooh. I so anything that I can't. I'm capacity. I've produced everything I can produce, and I cannot share the Rockfin stuff outside of Rockfin. So, but everything else you can access pretty much free. 
So if you want a coffee mug, ladies and gentlemen, what if if I just no, but I'll do mug. if you want to move this to Rumbler or whatever. No, I'll do I don't. It. I'm listen. I, I, Happy I'm, to. What do I? I, I, I want to get. I got to get off YouTube at some point. They'll kick you off well, eventually. Don't worry. They've tried it. Before. They'll do it. Uh, and I noticed your your subscription, your your subscribers is going up. You're almost like at one point eight thousand people now. I want to yes, get you to two thousand people. So and I'm bad. like, oh, me too, me yeah. too. And it actually kicked over this week, Clint, to where I could actually monetize these videos if I wanted to. Good but it's you. like a a penny of views, so I don't think it's worth it. But we'll see. We'll we'll build it up more. Absolutely. We can um, each get like fifty cents a month in royalties. Uh, I'm all. I'm, listen, any little bit helps Clint Powell here in the South Why as not? I make a living. Hey, yeah. So yeah, tell us so. about your gig because people will watch this on my YouTube channel. Just go to. You can go to Apple or any podcast. Check out during the break podcast. I have great conversations mm -hmm. with interesting people. Uh, I've. Ha I. I just. Anyway, just go look. It's an eclectic group of people. It's from business entertainers pro athletes. I also have marketingmixradio.com and dayfirepodcast.com where uh, about adventures in the great outdoors from people around the world doing great things. And I'll say this about Dayfire. We too have gear that's about to come out. Uh, we have some great hats that are about to come out. But if you like camping, hiking, biking, climbing, or paddling, uh, dayfirepodcast.com. Thank you, James and John oh. and Franny. I think JJ was saying that you and I should agree on what should happen. Let's work on that next time. Yeah, I think you should just vote for Trump and be done with it. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, on that fine. note. I don't care. Whatever. Until there's an ad. I mean. I won. Ladies and gentlemen, I've now got her voting for Trump. But the bad news Look is that last chopper. Look fans are going to blow you up, boy. They're going to blow Last chopper out of Saigon already <laughs> left. Not me. I'm on this. I'm on the rail, and I got my hand down for you, Monica. Come on, <laughs> reach. Come on, just it's reach. just a little wall. It's just further. one vote. As Saint just Peter recedes vote. in the distance, Saint Peter. Don't do that. I got to go pray now, <laughs> Monica Perez. I hope you. I'm Not glad allowed you're to pray in Trump's America. Love I am too. That's he's fighting for our churches. Hey, Monica. I love doing that. There's nothing better than pull the pin. Oh, Whoa, my headache day. is back. My headache. I'm glad, you're, PhD. I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Go smoke some Advil and get feeling better. <laughs> Bye, Monica. <laughs>